another domino has fallen, and uh, this is a very big one. So Matt Lauer has been fired um, because of accusations of sexual harassment or misconduct or assault. I don't know what word they're using for his cases. Uh, but let me read you the first brief part of this variety piece, and then you'll uh, get a good sense of why this is the case. So they say, As the co-host of NBC's Today, Matt Lauer once gave a colleague a sex toy as a present. It included an explicit note about how he wanted to use it on her, which left her mortified. All right, so... There was, they didn't have, like, a relationship or anything. It's just like, imagine a coworker that that you have gives you a gift and it's a sex toy and there's a note in there about how he wants to use it on you. And you're like, what the... Because you don't... There was no relationship there. That's what happened here. Okay, more. On another day, he summoned a different female employee to his office and then dropped his pants, showing her his penis. After the employee declined to do anything, visibly shaken... He reprimanded her for not engaging in a sexual act. Whoa. Whoa. Um, now, there's... There, by the way, since the first story broke, there's been like four or five more women coming out and saying, well, yep, yeah, that... Mm -hmm. That's right. One woman says um, she actually did have sex with him in his office, but she didn't he held her career in his hands so she didn't know what to do. And she was just like, uh, okay. But she was mortified. This was an instance seemingly of him trying to do the same thing with a different woman. And she was like, no. And so this was the result. Reprimanded her for not engaging in a sex act when he just was like, here's my dick. Oh boy. Okay, so he would sometimes quiz female producers about who they'd slept with, offering to trade names, and he loved to engage in crass quiz games with men and women in the office, fuck, marry, or kill, in which he would identify the female co-host that he'd most like to sleep with. Okay, so that part there, I don't... Like, that's just him being a creep, okay? And we do need to... I think when we have these discussions, we need to distinguish the you're just being a douche, um things from the, oh, you, you're a sexual harasser or even worse, this is a crime. Like you're, this is a criminal act here. So I don't even, I think honestly, when they add these kinds of things to these articles, it almost lessens the impact of it. But cause fuck, marry, kill. Yeah. I'm sure everybody has a creep at their job. Who's like playing fuck, marry, kill. And people might think it's a little weird and uncomfortable, but that's not there's no crime there. It's just a guy or a girl in some cases, maybe, who's a weirdo and who's creepy. But the other stuff, like the thing about, oh, you just call somebody in your office and just show them your dick. No, you can't do that. I mean, that should go without saying. Now, they explain in the article also, when he covered the, the Sochi, however you pronounce it, Sochi, Sochi, whatever, Olympics in Russia um, in 2014, that he would keep trying to get with these younger interns or whatever, or workers, call them to his room. Oh, could you bring me a pillow in my room? And then, you know, I guess make a move on them or whatever. Um, and it was a, it was a repeated thing. It was so bad that his wife was super suspicious and his wife apparently like wouldn't let him travel alone after a certain point. Um, so, and, but again, look, we need to, I think we need to separate the ones that are consensual from the ones that are not. And, but what I get from this story is this is not, he, he felt entitled to it. So when he's in that position and he's a powerful man and he's got people working under him. And again, you can't just be fucking people who are your subordinates because there's a power dynamic where, um, you're basically being exploitative. Now, by the way, there's a reason why that's not a law. Because it's not like in 100% of circumstances that's the case. And I think people are reasonable enough to get that. That sometimes you have somebody, you know, let's say they work for a, a place. They're, they both start at the same level. They start dating and then one person gets promoted or something. 
I think we're all reasonable enough to get that in a situation like that, that's not necessarily wrong. And it's not, there's people who've, oh, this is my boss, this is the person who works under them, and they get married. So it's not like 100% of the times it's wrong, which is why it's not a law. But it's a company policy at almost every company. Why? Because you're setting up the potential for abuse in that situation and for exploitation. And I think even though there are some examples of it being totally consensual, probably in most cases, you're dealing with exploiting the power dynamic to try to, you know, get what you want, and the person who, who would work under you doesn't know, they, they don't necessarily want it, and they don't feel like they can reject it, because then they're putting their career on the line. So, um, to me, if there were ones that were consensual, and, the, you know, the other women say, oh, it was 100% consensual, I'll say, okay, then don't include this one in all in the problems with what he did. But there's no excusing the one where he's, you, what, calls somebody to his office, takes his dick out? Like, go. And sh she's like, no. And then he reprimands her? No, because, okay, these are guys who are, whether it's Charlie Rose, whether it's uh, Matt Lauer, whether it's fucking Roger Ailes, Bill O'Reilly... They're old school, and I'm not using, I'm using that in a pejorative, I'm not using that in a way to excuse it. They're old school, and they use their position to be exploitative to get what they want. That's what it is. And I don't know if maybe in their minds they thought, well, this is acceptable, um, and I'm famous and rich and people love me, so they want to fuck me. And they think like, oh, this is okay. This is all consensual. Like Charlie Rose said, oh, I thought it was all consensual. But then when you read the details of it, you go, yeah, but that's not, that's not normal. It's not normal to do that. People who you have no relationship with at all, and then you call them over under the guise of working. And you tell them, hey, you could bring somebody if you want. You could stay in the guest house if you're uncomfortable, yada, yada. And then they show up and the guest house has boxes in it. There's no intention of letting them stay in the guest house. They can't stay in the guest house. Charlie Rose would get out of the shower naked and be like, I called you, did you hear me? And she's like, whoa, whoa, what the fuck? I'm here organizing your bookcase because you called me to do that. Now you're fucking walking around with your dick out. And Matt Lauer, same thing. They feel entitled to it. They rose the corp they, they went through the corporate ranks, got to the top, and then when they get to the top, they just kind of willy-nilly treat the work environment like, oh, well, obviously I can try to get whatever I want uh, from a sexual angle. Yeah, don't... It's amazing. Now, by the way, who's going to be the next domino to fall? There's a decent chance. I'm not... I won't say for sure. But allegedly... Geraldo Rivera. Because he did a really, like, full-throated defense of Matt Lauer. Um, and was... And said, like, oh, the news is a flirty business. So, yeah, it's not that these... Are, this is just not what everybody thinks it is. And so, yeah... And then even Fox News was like, dude, what are you saying? And then they made Geraldo, like, apologize. So, look, again, look, I don't want it to get to the point where reasonable people say, oh, this is like a witch hunt, you know what I mean? But again, I think in all these cases, the devil is in the details. So, to me, when I read through what Matt Lauer did, I mean... Isn't it kind of game, set, match when you heard the, the second accusation here? Dropped his pants, showing his penis to an employee. She was like, no. And then he was shaken and reprimanded her for not engaging in a sex act. Even if you're willing to say, listen, the creepy stuff, whatever, it's just sometimes at work it happens with everybody. You, you know, hey, somebody, fuck, marry, kill, whatever. You want to put all that aside? I agree with you. I wouldn't include that in the, you know, oh, list of accusations. Sometimes he made, like, dirty jokes. Whatever. But that's not okay. And it does look like this is an instance of, you know, taking taking advantage of your position of authority. And in the, in, in the case of these guys, I think they know that that's what they're doing. Um, certainly with Charlie Rose, he... He only did it with people who worked under him. So, the, he, Charlie Rose worked for CBS. His show was on PBS, and it was recorded at Bloomberg. So, you have employees from those three places that he's always around. 
But would you look at that? Never did he engage in these kinds of um, actions with an employee of CBS, an employee of PBS, or an employee of Bloomberg. He only did it for people who worked for Charlie Rose's company. What does that tell you? It tells you, I have all the power, I have all the authority. If they come work under me, I hold their career in my hand now, don't I? So if I want to make a creepy move, I'm going to make a creepy move. If I want to be exploitative, so be it. Not okay. Not okay. So, you know, a lot of these instances are happening. Um, there's probably going to be more politicians where it comes out, stuff like this. It's probably going to be more um, people in the news world where it comes out. And it's, it's a, it started out as a snowball, and now it's become an avalanche.